Hello Basement Programmers and welcome to the Basement Programmer YouTube channel. This is Tom with BasementProgrammer.com. This is the first video in a series we're going to look at the new AWS Toolkit for .NET Refactoring. The toolkit is available at no extra charge from AWS and bolts into Visual Studio. So what is this toolkit? Well, it's a series of tools that's designed to help you bring your older .NET framework applications up to the modern versions of .NET. Now, when I say .NET Framework, I mean the legacy versions that were created to run on Windows only. So this is .NET Framework 4.8 in earlier releases. Now, Microsoft has told us that the .NET Framework is pretty much end of the road. All new development is going into the modern .NET. This was originally called .NET Core up until .NET Core 3.1, and in the current releases, it's just called .NET. This version of .NET runs on Windows, as well as Mac and Linux. Now, with .NET Framework not getting any further updates, we're faced with a dilemma when it comes to our older applications. Do we keep these applications on .NET Framework, knowing that they're stuck where they are? Or do we expend the effort to upgrade those applications into the current versions of .NET? Now, in my opinion, the upgrade question comes down to this. How do you perceive the life of the application? Now, if this is an app that has limited runway before it's going to be retired or replaced, then clearly you aren't going to spend the time to refactor it. If, however, this is an app that's going to live on, and especially if this is an app that's going to get updated with new functionality, then you should absolutely move to a modern version of .NET. And that would be either .NET 6 or 7, depending on how you view the trade-offs between standard term versus long term. This is where the AWS Toolkit for .NET Refactoring comes in. At the point I'm creating this video, the toolkit has three primary functions. First, it has a compatibility assessment, and that's going to look at your application to determine how hard or easy it will be in order to convert the application from .NET Framework to .NET. This is going to look at your application code, as well as your dependencies and your new GET packages. You'll then get a report that will help you make decisions about what you want to do with the application. Second, the toolkit includes porting assistance that will help you actually convert your projects to the target version of .NET. Now, if you've ever used the AWS tool called the AWS Porting Assistant, this is the next iteration of that tool. So its functionality has been incorporated into the toolkit. The toolkit will continue to evolve and get new functionality. Um, if you are currently using the AWS Porting Assistant, you should really make plans to migrate to the refactoring toolkit. Finally, the toolkit for refactoring includes functionality that will help you test your applications after they've been ported to the new version of .NET. Now, this is achieved by deploying the applications in a container on AWS's Elastic Container Service, or ECS. This will allow you to see the applications and see how they function uh, in the new version of the runtime. Now, you do have to be aware, this toolkit is intended to be assistive. It's not a magic wand. So you may and probably will have some additional work to do after the tool has updated your application. However, the toolkit will help you with some of that undifferentiated heavy lifting. So be prepared to roll up your sleeves and get your hands dirty after the tool has done what it can to help you. As I mentioned at the start, this is the first in a series of videos that I'll be creating around the toolkit. In this video, I'm going to look through the assessment of an application and convert the code from .NET Framework 4.8 to .NET 6. My next videos will go deeper. All right, let's dig in. Okay, so here we are in my development environment. And what we're going to do is we're going to get ready to install the Visual Studio uh, extension that is the AWS Toolkit for .NET Refactoring. Okay, so obviously we start off by starting Visual Studio. And we'll go continue without code. And I just, just so we can get into Visual Studio here. And we'll let that finish. Yep. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go extensions and then go to manage extensions. 
Okay, so we've got online and we've got installed. So in the online section, which gives us a, all of the extensions available to download, let's type AWS in the search box and let that complete. So you can see here we've got the AWS toolkit for Visual Studio. I've already got this installed because I obviously do a lot of work inside of uh, AWS. And now we have the AWS toolkit for .NET refactoring. Uh, Visual Studio 2022, which is what I'm using. Okay, what I'm going to do here is say download. And obviously that down downloads pretty quickly and we get this message here that says uh, your changes will be scheduled. So I'm just going to close. And now what I want to do is I'm just going to close Visual Studio and allow the installer to kick off and make the changes necessary to get that actually installed. Okay, I'm going to go modify. And then I'm going to hit close. And then once that's done, I'm going to restart Visual Studio. Once again, I'm going to go continue without code because I want to go through and make sure that it gets that the extension gets completely installed. And now under extensions, you can see here I've got the toolkit for .NET refactoring installed. So I'm just going to click Getting Started here. Okay, and then we've got a couple of options to get ready. Uh, the first is the AWS profile. So we've got two options here. We can choose a, a named AWS profile. And this will be a profile that's been established by way of the command line. So if you go um, AWS configure and then you enter in a, uh, a, a key and a secret key for your credentials that allow you to connect. Uh, you'd be able to drop down here and select and usually default is the first option that's available. Now the other option here that's available is use existing AWS CLI slash SDK credentials. So what's that? Well, what that does is it allows the SDK to find credentials automatically. Now, if you have a, a default profile uh, configured on your machine, it'll end up using that. But this also allows you to do things like leverage uh, AWS uh, IAM Center, uh, formerly known as the SSO. Or, for example, if you're running this on an EC2 instance inside of your account, uh, the, uh, this option will allow you to inherit credentials from your IAM role that's attached to that instance. So you've got those two options there. I'm going to stick with the named profile because I've got a... I've got the AWS command line installed and I've got a default profile set up, but you can use either one. Uh, the functionality is going to be exactly the same. It doesn't matter which option you choose. You just need to make sure that whichever one you're choosing obviously works for you and has valid credentials. The next option here we have is the AWS region for test deployments. And you have two options. You have US East 2 or EU West 2. So I'm going to keep this as U.S. East 2 because I'm on the East Coast of, of, of the United States. Now, this only affects where the toolkit is going to look to deploy for test deployments. You still have all the options available to you for deploying to any region that you have access to for your normal deployments. This is just the automated test functionality that has been introduced in the toolkit. So choose the option that, that's right for you, either you know, US or, or EU. And then you have the option here for AWS toolkit for .NET refactoring data usage. So this is going to provide telemetry data back to AWS on all of the types of functions that you're using and things of that nature. Um, it's, it's a good idea to keep this checked because it allows uh, you know, AWS to get information on how the toolkit's being used and the features and functionality. Um, keep in mind this is not sending, AWS is not getting your, uh, your source code or anything like that. It's really just usage data that helps improve the product. 
So as I've got those options set, I'm going to hit next. And I'm going to get a message that says I've got to look at the uh, end user license agreement. So I'll scroll back up here and click this option, which is going to open up the um, EULA uh, end user licensing agreement. So you can see uh, you can see that there. I close that and then hit next. And now we get to the AWS Toolkit for .NET Refactoring dashboard. Now, if I had a solution in here, this would have some, some data set up. Um, I don't have a solution open at the moment. We're going to get to that in the next segment of this video. But this is the, uh, this is the center of where you're going to uh, be driving the refactoring effort. All right, so I'm going to stop this video for now, and we're going to jump into the next segment in just a moment. Okay, now that we've got the toolkit installed uh, and we want to use that to modernize an application. So the whole idea behind the toolkit is it makes modernizing apps, bringing them from say .NET Framework 4.8 uh, up to a more modern version of .NET, so .NET 6 or .NET 7. Uh, so uh, in order to do that, obviously we need an application to modernize. Now, Luckily for us, the team at AWS, the developer advocates, have uh, created a series of applications that are designed to showcase different functionality inside of AWS using .NET. Okay, we can find that here at the AWS Samples AWS Net Guides GitHub repo. This is publicly available. If you scroll down here, you can see there is a Sample Applications 2022 folder inside of that repo. The uh, .NET develop, developer advocate teams uh, got together and they created a series of sample applications here uh, to be used by customers. And this showcases a bunch of different things for how to use .NET and AWS services together. So we're going to have a look at the media catalog application that was actually written by myself earlier this year. And as you can see, there are two different versions of the media library. Okay, there's the media library 4.8, and that is built using .NET Framework 4.8. And there's also the media library 6.0, which is you which is built using .NET 6. So we're going to go ahead and grab a copy of that. And I can go here and copy. Source, and what I'm going to do, uh, repos, I'm going to clone that entire repo. It's got a whole bunch of different functionality in there that, that can be quite useful. Okay, that it's going to complete fairly quickly, and what I can do here is I'm going to look on my computer. It's net samples. Okay, so sample applications 2022 media catalog. Okay, now the process of uh, upgrading a solution from .NET 4 point, Framework 4.8 to .NET 6 is going to be destructive. Okay, the update happens in place. So that means I really don't want to do that here at, my, at the, uh, where my main copy of the application is. So what I want to do, I'm going to copy that. I'm going to jump back a few directories, source, local, and I'm going to make a copy of that here, Media Library 4.8. And I can go in and I can start that up. And the first thing I always want to do is I want to try to rebuild the solution, make sure everything is, is good. Okay, 
All right, we can see rebuild succeeded. Everything is fine. So this puts me in a good position to start my refactoring and start porting this application. There's a couple things I'm gonna have to do before that and we'll cover those in the next segment. Okay, so deploying the infrastructure into your AWS account is pretty simple. Okay, I'm here in PowerShell. Uh, and if we look, sample application, so AWS NetGuide, sample applications, uh, 2022, media catalog, media library 6.0. So this is different from the source code that we're, we're getting because we're in the uh, .NET 6 folder, slash CDK is where the project is. And that you can see there corresponds to the location here. And all I need to do to deploy this infrastructure is use the AWS CDK project. So the CDK deploy. Okay, and that will take a minute or two. Okay, and CDK is gonna give me an indication of all the stuff it wants to do in my account. And I'm gonna say yes. Okay, now this is gonna take a little while, so we're not gonna sit and watch the entire thing go along. I'm gonna pause the video and get back uh, and start again once the deployment process completes. Okay, uh, here we are once again. I've restarted the, the recording because the cloud, uh, deploy cloud deployment kit has finished deploying my stack. So you can see uh, there's quite a bit, a fair bit of infrastructure that was created in my account. Um, you know, total, total time deployed. Uh, what this stack has done is it's created an S3 bucket in my account that is going to be used for images. Uh, it's created some parameters in my account that the uh, application is going to retrieve uh, and, and use to do connections. It's also set up a, um, a CloudFront distribution to make images uh, available. So once that's done, what we can do is let's try to run up this application here. Right, and we can see here the application running. Now, the, the application doesn't look like much. We haven't spent a lot of time making it look pretty, but it's got some basic functionality here. So I can upload images to the, uh, to the application. And the project actually ships with some sample images that were provided by the Smithsonian uh, that, that we've included here. So I can upload an image, and I'm going to pick an image of a cheetah. It's been included here. And a couple things are happening behind the scenes. This, uh, this application is using Amazon recognition, and it's looking at the image to figure out if there's anything that is potentially offensive about the image before it allows it to be uploaded. And the next thing it's going to do is it's going to allow me to process an image and it's going to show me the image, and recognition is going to provide some details about what it thinks has been found in that image. So I can check the tags that I want to associate with it. So a cheetah, wildlife, animal, mammal. I'm not going to choose panther because it's uh, not a picture of a panther. And I can hit save. And you can see once again, uh, once I've saved some details, I can go back and look at um, the, the tags that I've saved against it. So uh, behind the scenes, when I deployed the infrastructure, we created some DynamoDB tables. That's where all that data is being stored. Now, once again, this, this application is running .NET Framework 4.8. And what we're gonna do in the remainder of this video is we're gonna use the refactoring toolkit for Visual Studio to upgrade the application and get it ready to run on .NET 6. Okay, so once again, back in my source code, I've, I've shut down my application and I'm looking at the dashboard to 
tool window. Um, now, if I had, if I had accidentally closed that for some reason, I can get there by going extensions, AWS toolkit for refactoring and going dashboard. Okay. Now one thing you do have to be aware of in order to assess the solution, we actually have to open up a CS file okay, and have that, have that open and available and then switch back to the toolkit. Now, assessing a solution is going to go through. It's going to scan all of the source code for the solution. It's going to scan the um, dependencies, and it's going to scan the new get packages and, and figure out exactly how hard or easy this is going to be for us to actually convert. Now, one thing I'm going to do here for the moment, I'm going to actually remove this test, this test set. Uh, obviously, in a real life scenario, you'd want to also upgrade your tests. And, and get those ready to run on the target version of .NET as well. Um, I'm not going to do that in, in this video because uh, it doesn't really hold any value. It would be the same process. Okay, so now let's just hit save. And what I want to do from this dashboard, you can see here, assess your solution. So solution file, media library.sln. That's the solution file here that we have and the status is not started. So all I'm gonna do here is click this start assessment. And this is gonna go through and first thing it's gonna do is ask me what target version of .NET I wanna target. Do I wanna target .NET 7, .NET 6, 3.1, or .NET 5? I'm gonna go with .NET 6 um, just because. Uh, you can certainly pick any, any version that you'd want to support. Um, at this point in time, I would not obviously not go to .NET Core 3.1 or .NET 5 because those are out of support by now. So .NET 6 gives us the uh, long-term support. Um, .NET 7 is a standard term support release. Realistically, the difference at this point is only going to be about six months. So it would be perfectly fine to go to .NET 7 if that's what you wanted to do. Okay, so once I've selected my target framework and I've set it to .NET 6, I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to allow this to run through and, and scan my, my solution. Now this will take a few minutes um, as it's going to go through all of the source code. It's going to look at all of the NuGet packages and everything else. Um, so I'm going to pause the video and come back when this is done. Okay, so it's taken a few minutes to complete. Like I said, I've, I've paused the video and we're back now. So you can see here, that after the assessment's gone through, we've got you know, our solution, same solution. We've got the status being complete, target version being .NET 6.0. And we can see here the assessment overview. So we've got the number of incompatible NuGet packages that have been found, number of portable packages, um, incomplete or incompatible API calls. So these are things where uh, maybe an API call has been deprecated or you're using a different class to do the same sort of thing. Now the next thing to call your attention to here is if you, if you look at the output window and we switch over to error list. We've got, we've got zero errors, uh, but we've got 40 warnings. Now, some of these are obviously code uh, code warnings. But some of these other ones here are listed for the AWS toolkit. So I can see here, I'm right away I'm getting indications as to some of the code that isn't going to be compatible. So controller is incompatible for target framework. Okay, so there's obviously a different controller class that we're going to be using. Um, same with action results. And so this is giving you some clues as to how much manual effort may be required in order to uh, upgrade your application to the target version of .NET 6. Now I've got 40 warnings here. Now some of the stuff that you're seeing here is actually going to be taken care of automatically for you when we go to port your, our code over, which we're going to do in the next segment. Now there's two, uh, so after the status, you've got two panels here. Okay, the assessment, which we've just gone over, 
And then we've got run and test your application on AWS. So this is designed, this has got new functionality to allow you to automatically try to deploy your application using the target version of .NET into AWS and so that you can see how your application is actually going to function in, in real deployment. And it uses uh, Amazon Elastic Container Service, or ECS, in your account. Now this corresponds, if you remember when we are setting it up, uh, we had to specify a region for test deployments. That's what the that's where this comes in. So uh, this is going to deploy your application into that region. Now again, we're not going to get to that in this video. We'll do that in another video segment. But for now, what we're going to do is we're really focusing here on the assessment and porting. And in the next segment, we're going to actually port our application uh, to the target version of .NET, so .NET 6. Okay, now porting your application has two stages to it. Okay, there's going to be the initial porting of your solution. And I can do that here. I want to select the Media Library Project. And I can go here and go drop down Port Selected Project. And I can select the checkbox and I can click Port. And I'm going to do that now. So you get that you get that little warning, and that warning was just indicating that the porting of your project is being done in place. As I mentioned, this is a destructive action; it can't be undone. Um, and then you can see the the porting was actually pretty quick uh, for this solution. Obviously, it's not a huge solution. If you have a large solution with a whole bunch of different projects and many more files, you may find it takes some more time. And I'm going to hit OK there. Now I'm going to get a, a message here that projects have been modified, obviously, by the tool uh, to, to do that upgrade. You want to click Reload All uh, at your first opportunity. Don't make any changes uh, to, your, to your project before you've done that. And then what I want to do is click Save. Now I'm going to close these little messages that have popped up here. And one thing we can do is we can right-click Properties. And if we look, target framework is now .NET 6.0. However, if I try to now run this application, I'm going to find that the project doesn't build. Okay, and you know it, there's, there's errors that offers to run the previous version, which obviously isn't going to work. And let's see if I show the errors, I can see a whole bunch of different messages here of things that aren't working after I port. Now, I mentioned that porting an application has two different stages. You've got the automated porting that the tool can do. But you've also got the manual refactoring that's going to be required uh, afterwards. And that's where we're at now. In the next segment, we're going to actually look through going through and doing some of the porting that's going to be required to make this project work correctly. Um, Now the next step we need to take care of is the manual refactoring because we need to get our project into a state where I can actually build. So uh, we're going to go through this in a series of steps that you can you can follow along. First thing we're going to have to take care of is some missing um, dependencies. So if we look here under dependencies and frameworks and such. Uh, there's a, a few things that are going to be missing, namely all of the AWS SDK. So this got removed as part of the conversion process. So I'm going to go ahead and re-add those SDKs in. I'm going to right-click here, and we're going to go Manage NuGet Packages. And we'll switch over to the Browse section. Okay, and we're going to search for the SDKs that we need. So AWS SDK dot core. Let's 
install that. Okay. Uh, S3. Now I know that I have a list of the SDKs that we need because I wrote the original application. So it's really just a case of comparing what we had before and re-adding those SDKs in. Um, if you didn't, then uh, if you didn't know which SDKs were required, then you'd obviously have a bit more work to do trying to figure out uh, everything that you needed. So, uh, see, we need DynamoDB here. Got the extensions netcore.setup. Systems management. Recognition. X-ray and the recorder for the uh, AWS SDKs. Okay, so those are all the lists. Uh, what I would suggest just for for your own processes, you might want to go before you do the conversion, uh, check and see which packages that you have installed and referenced, so that you can then match them up afterwards. Uh, like I said, I, I knew what I had because I wrote the original code. Okay, so we've got those set up and ready to go. Now, another thing that we're going to have to do is we have to take care of some of the incompatible API calls that are uh, that can be found. So, uh, I go here under services and the S3 storage service, we can find that, for example, here, HTTP posted file base, this doesn't exist in the, in .NET 6, it did exist in .NET framework. So if I, Tracing back here, file management controller. Okay, this is the entry point here. So uh, this doesn't exist currently. So what we have to do is we have to go and fix that. So what I can do is I can change this to be a uh, an I form file. This is going to work as far as the functionality that we need. But once again, we've got some, some carry-on logic here that is, is taking place. So the storage service, uh, so if I go down here to I storage service, I need to change that. And my S3 storage service, I need to change that. Okay, we need to handle, because now because we're dealing with an iForm file, we need to take care of changing the way that that file gets handled. And I've got the, got the replacement code here. There's some slight changes. We can save that. Now I know that there is Another implementation here, which I can change to be an I form file. I can just change that whole mess. 
with it there. Okay, now let's have a look and see. Now what I can do, I'm gonna to try to rebuild my project. And we get some interesting results here because I've got no errors listed. Okay, my project succeeded. I've got no errors listed. However, my build failed. And <clears throat> what this is, is this is in relation to the views and the code that gets embedded in the views. So it's important to understand when you're refactoring, um, just because it looks like your, your code compiles fine, um, you may find some co some things that break along the way, or you may find some things that appear to work, but don't. So it's important to remember to keep testing your application as you go, uh, and, and as you make progress on this refactoring. Um, so what I, what I need to do here is I need to go and I, I've traced down where the problems are down to this layout. And you can see, as I open up the uh, layout file, well, there's some more things that aren't quite compatible with .NET 6 uh, that were fine in .NET 3.5. Uh, sorry, .NET uh, 4.8, which is where we started. I'm gonna make a quick change here on the title. And I'm going to change the title, uh, basically just bringing in this environment variable, uh, this environment version, and that's going to print out the version of .NET that we're running on. Okay, uh, you know, like I said, we start out with .NET Framework 4.8. Um, so I'm just going to have it display the version, so you can see when we're running that we're actually running on the new version of .NET. Now we've got some of these script render controls here that weren't available uh, in .NET 6. So I'm going to replace these here to pull in. And then down here I've got some additional uh, some additional links. Now, if I were to try to run this, let's see, I can, I can now, I should be able to compile. However, if I try to run this, I'm going to get an error. You can see here uh, is a cryptography exception being thrown when I try to run the, run the code. And that is caused by some of the boilerplate code that gets injected to create the app settings. So, you know, when we, when we move to .NET 6, there is some app settings work that goes into, uh, you know, the configuration all happens in the app settings. Um, and one of the things that gets injected here is this Kestrel uh, functionality for setting up the endpoints. And this is going to require a certificate uh, to set up the SSL because it's trying to set up HTTPS for us. We don't really need that, so I'm just going to delete the entire Kestrel section. And let's just make sure I get that right. So I'm going to delete the Kestrel section and up to the trailing comma after that allowed house. Save it. And let's see if we can run now. Okay, now, now we've got the media catalog uh, and it's running. And let's see if we can click around and access some functionality. Okay, so we're in pretty good shape now. We've actually got the, the media catalog and it looks, you know, it looks pretty much the same. Uh, if I look up here, you can see my ASP.net uh, in the title bar. Oops. And you can see 6.0. Let's see if I can get the pop-up to happen again. Uh, 6.0.12 is the version. So I am running on .NET 6. Now, once again, though, it is important for you to continue to test through your application. So I'm going to go in here and say I'm going to upload uh, a new picture, my, my zebras, um, NZP, go upload. Okay, that seems to work okay. I'm going to go and I'm going to try to process my image again. <clears throat> 
So I can see there, uh, you know, the image. Okay, we got zebra, animal, wildlife, mammal. Click up, uh, and we can see here we've now got an issue that that's come up, and this is again one an incompatibility with uh, the code that was working perfectly fine under .NET Framework, but now isn't going to work correctly in .NET 6. So this is again some additional uh, some additional functionality we've got to correct. So I've got this uh, I form collection. In one of my in one of my binders, so I'm gonna go there, and let's see. That was in the recognition controller. So there we go recognition. And that was here in the post for this process method, and you can see that it says form collection is the um, is the old class that was being received, and what .NET 6 actually wants here is the iForm collection. Okay, so once again, I'm going to save. Let's rebuild my project and run it up. And let's have a look. We can go process once again. Go to the process item. Select save and this time it works so uh, that's just really just highlighting the fact that you you do have to go through and test your your code end to end um, the refactoring toolkit has has helped us in that it's done some of the undifferentiated heavy lifting uh, but we have had some additional um, manual refactoring that that has to happen afterwards and we do have to keep testing to make sure that we've we've run through all of our different processes, all of our different flows to make sure that all of the code that is there uh, is now compatible with .NET 6. Uh, so, but we, we do actually have an application that is set and ready to go now that is running in .NET 6. All right, well, I'm going to end this video. Uh, this, is, this is the first in a series. What I wanted to get through was how to onboard the application, which we did, how to scan the application, how to convert the application, and how to get to this point where we've now got an application that's working. The next video in the series, we're going to go through and we're going to do a little bit more deeper dive into some of the additional functionality that's available in the, uh, the AWS toolkit for .NET refactoring. So. Thanks for watching this video on the AWS refactoring toolkit for .NET. Keep a lookout for the next video in this series where we'll take the toolkit further and explore some of the additional functionality. As always, if you have any feedback, please feel free to leave comments or you can email me directly. The email address is tom, that's T-O-M, at basementprogrammer.com. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and hit the like button to let me know. That's it for now and I'll see you next time.